Americans throw away more than 20 billion plastic food containers every year. Behind every single-use clamshell or tray lies a massive challenge. They're often smeared with grease, sauces, and even leftover food. This makes recycling far more complicated than with plastic bottles or soda cans. Yet modern technology is opening up an unexpected path forward. What if those trays, clamshells, and takeout boxes could be reborn into something entirely different? So how does this journey of turning waste into a resource actually unfold? Join the factor in as we go inside America's recycling plants to uncover the process of giving plastic food containers a second life. Few people realize that even when a plastic food container has been collected, thoroughly washed, and shredded into clean fragments, its journey back into becoming a new food container is almost impossible. In the United States, FDA enforces extremely strict standards for any packaging that comes into direct contact with food. The slightest risk of residual grease, sauce, or invisible microplastics can cause an entire batch of material to be rejected. This safety barrier is why recycled plastic from takeout containers is rarely reborn as new food packaging. Unlike aluminum cans or glass bottles, which can be endlessly cycled. Instead, these plastics are forced down a different path, transformed into park benches, composite lumber, or polyester fibers for the textile industry. Across American cities, single-use plastic food containers often end their short-lived journey in curbside recycling bins. From there, specialized trucks operated by waste management companies collect them on a regular schedule compressing tons of packaging into massive containers before hauling them to transfer stations. Unlike aluminum cans or PET bottles, which in many states are supported by deposit return systems that reward consumers for bringing them back, plastic food containers have no such incentive. As a result, most people treat them as ordinary trash rather than a resource of value, and the recovery rate remains alarmingly low. In some municipalities, authorities exclude styrofoam containers entirely from accepted recycling lists, as local facilities simply lack the technology to process them. Even for the containers that are technically recyclable, the basic requirement is that they must be empty and relatively clean. Otherwise, they are immediately flagged as contamination and rejected as soon as they reach the plant. Mountains of plastic food containers freshly unloaded at the facility, are quickly fed onto conveyor belts, marking the start of the sorting process. Dozens of workers line both sides of the moving line, their eyes fixed on the endless stream of mixed materials rolling past. With steady rhythm, they swipe away anything that doesn't belong. Metal cans, plastic bags, scraps of paper, and even containers still coated with leftover food that cannot be reused. It is a task that demands absolute focus because even a few stray items slipping through can compromise the quality of an entire batch. Lightweight styrofoam clamshells are also often removed right at the start since most plants in the US lack the technology to process this type of plastic. After repeated rounds of observation and careful picking, the flow of waste gradually becomes cleaner, reduced mostly to clear pet trays and white PP containers the two most valuable plastics for recycling. Once the sorted containers are gathered, they move directly into the shredding stage, a crucial step that not only reduces their size, but also ensures deep cleaning. Fed by conveyor belts into the grinder, dozens of sharp steel blades spin at high speed, filling the hall with a harsh metallic roar. In just seconds, rigid trays still smeared with grease, and dried sauce are torn apart into countless fragments, each only about an inch across. But the process is more than just cutting. Inside the grinder, jets of hot water and industrial detergents are integrated into the system. As the plastic shatters, every exposed surface is blasted with pressurized streams that wash away grease, food residue, and dirt. Some advanced facilities even add enzymes that break down fats stripping away stubborn contamination the moment the plastic flakes appear. This combination of shredding and washing simultaneously saves energy while maximizing cleanliness, 
as every fresh surface is immediately scrubbed in the turbulent flow. After leaving the grinder, the mixture of plastic flakes passes through a secondary wash tank where light fragments float and heavier ones sink, an effective way to separate caps, films, and leftover contaminants. Finally, the stream is sent through centrifuges and powerful dryers. By the time it emerges, the plastic flakes are clean, dry, and uniform, resembling a bed of glittering plastic sand under the lights. From the shredded plastic fragments, the optical sorting system combined with artificial intelligence takes over a crucial role, separating each material with near-perfect precision. Along the conveyor belt, an array of high-powered cameras scans every flake, analyzing color and surface features in just a few milliseconds. Any piece that doesn't match the mainstream, whether it's clear, pet, green pet, white HDPE, or even a stray shard of glass, wood, or ceramic, is instantly flagged. Powerful air jets then fire with pinpoint accuracy, blasting the unwanted particle out of the flow. The sophistication of this technology is almost hard to believe. A single burst of air can target a fragment weighing less than one thousandth of an ounce, without disturbing the surrounding pieces. The throughput is equally remarkable. On average, one optical sorter can process more than 10,000 fragments every second, achieving accuracy rates above 95%. Put in perspective, that's the equivalent output of hundreds of workers laboring nonstop, yet still unable to match this level of consistency. Every passing moment, tens of thousands of plastic flakes are separated into distinct streams of material. The result is a purified, uniform flow of plastic, ready to move on to melting and transformation into a new form of raw material. From what once was a chaotic stream, the refined plastic frag transformation that turns them into reusable raw material. The flakes are fed into the extrusion system where temperatures inside the heating chamber climb above 520 degrees. Under this intense heat, each fragment gradually softens and merges, forming a thick, molten stream that flows forward like a ribbon of man. A massive screw turns relentlessly, mixing and pushing the molten plastic under increasing pressure. With every twist of the auger, the material is forced closer to the final filter. There, it must pass through ultra-fine metal screens designed to capture the smallest impurities still remaining. Once through the screens, the molten stream is cut into tiny granules, known as pellets. A cold water bath immediately locks each piece into shape, ensuring uniform size and a smooth, glossy surface, almost like miniature synthetic pearls. Millions of these pellets are then dried and collected, forming a clean, compact flow of raw material, ready to serve as the foundation for countless new plastic products in modern life. Once the recycled plastic pellets are ready, they move on to production lines where they are transformed into entirely new products. One of the most common and efficient methods is injection molding. In this process, each batch of pellets is melted into a thick, viscous stream of plastic, then injected into heavy steel molds under extremely high pressure. Within seconds, the mold is completely filled, forming objects with precise and detailed shapes. As the mold cools, the plastic solidifies and the finished product is released. Durable trash bins lining city streets, heavy-duty pallets stacked in warehouses, or storage containers found in everyday American homes. This technology makes true mass production possible, turning out thousands of identical products in a single shift. What's remarkable is that all of these items trace their origins back to single-use food containers that once seemed destined for just a few minutes of utility. Through injection molding, their lifespan is extended for years, proving that what was once waste can become a valuable and practical resource once again. While countless products are shaped through injection molding, another stream of plastic pellets embarks on an equally vital journey. Extrusion. If injection molding is like filling a closed mold to form individual objects, extrusion operates on the principle of a continuous flow. Each batch of pellets is fed into a hopper and funneled down into a heated barrel. Inside, a massive screw rotates, 
mixing, compressing, and pushing the molten plastic forward. Under intense heat and pressure, the material softens and blends into a uniform stream, like a ribbon of man-made lava. Once the plastic reaches its ideal state, it is forced through an open die with a fixed shape. Unlike injection molding, which fills an entire cavity at once, extrusion allows for products of virtually unlimited length, plastic beams, piping, or flat boards. Immediately afterward, a cooling system using water or chilled air solidifies the plastic, stabilizing its form and surface. The result is durable composite planks built to withstand years of weather or technical plastic pipes essential for construction and infrastructure. After some of the recycled pellets are turned into trash bins and pallets through injection molding, and others become planks or pipes through extrusion, another remarkable journey awaits this material. Fiber spinning. The process begins as recycled pellets are fed into massive heating systems, melting into a uniform stream of plastic. From there, the molten flow is pushed through thousands of tiny nozzles, forming countless fine strands as thin as silk. These strands are instantly cooled, then stretched to increase their strength and to define their precise diameter. The result is rolls of polyester fibers, the fundamental raw material for the modern textile industry. From these fibers, factories can weave carpets, automotive upholstery, and even sportswear. Major brands have embraced this unique resource to create sustainable products. Adidas, for example, has developed sneakers made with recycled polyester, transforming what was once discarded ocean plastic or single-use food containers into shoes worn by millions around the world. What's truly astonishing is that it all begins with a plastic food container that may have existed on a dinner table for only a few minutes. Through fiber spinning, its lifespan is extended by years, reborn as a sustainable product woven into everyday life. Yet the journey of turning a single plastic food container into recycled pellets and then into new products represents only a small fraction of reality. In the United States, most plastic food containers never make it this far. The numbers are staggering. Only about 5% of bottles and containers are actually recycled. The rest are buried in massive landfills or sent to incinerators, quietly adding pressure to the environment. For years, America's easy solution was to export millions of tons of plastic waste to Asian countries such as China, Malaysia, Vietnam, and Thailand. But when China imposed a ban on plastic waste imports in 2018, that door slammed shut, forcing the U.S. to confront its own mountain of trash. In this context, some nations have chosen a different path. Singapore offers a striking example. Instead of recycling each container into new products, most discarded plastics are sent to waste to energy plants. There, together with other household waste, they are burned in massive furnaces at extremely high temperatures. The process reduces waste volume by up to 90%, while the steam produced is used to spin turbines and generate electricity for the national grid. For a small island nation with limited land, this is seen as an optimal solution, tackling waste while producing energy at the same time. This technology has already spread across Europe and Japan, but in the U.S., high investment costs and cheap energy prices have kept it from becoming a mainstream choice. Still, under the mounting pressures of plastic pollution and climate change, the question remains, is it time for America to consider this model? From a plastic food container that existed on a dinner table for only a few minutes, the recycling journey reveals something remarkable. Technology can transform what once seemed worthless into a valuable resource, serving human life for years to come. Whether it's a public trash bin, a durable composite plank, or even a pair of sneakers from a global brand, all of them share the same humble origin, plastic waste. Yet alongside these achievements lie unresolved contradictions. In the U.S., most plastic containers never complete this cycle, ending up instead in landfills 
incinerators, or shipped overseas. This reality reminds us that technology alone is not enough. Real change requires community awareness, strong policy, and bold investment. The story of recycling food containers, then, is not just a mechanical process inside factories. It reflects the choices we make about how to live on this planet. Each container reborn is a small step toward a more sustainable future. And the question remains, are we ready to ensure those small steps add up to a giant leap for society? If you found this journey offered a new perspective, don't forget to click the like button, like share your thoughts in the comments, and subscribe to The Factor and for more eye-opening stories of industry and transformation. See you again in the upcoming videos.